What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here and today what we are going to be talking about is your favorite team, my favorite team, and your mom's favorite team, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yes ladies and gentlemen, we are back on that grind. Six videos a week, six days a week, where your boy sits in his most comfortable chair and talks to you on a really below average camera with his kitchen in the background to give you my expert analysis on the world's finest football establishment in Jacksonville, Florida, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now we're going to be back on the six video week grind talking about the Jaguars as long as we think and as long as there is going to be a football season in the works, obviously with Corona, COVID-19. We really don't know if there is going to be a football season 150% just yet obviously you know everything is up in the air with this global pandemic going around um this is not a political channel so we're not going to be diving into corona we're not going to be diving into covid19 and we're not going to be diving into mask either we're going to exclusively just be talking about football and we're going to exclusively be talking about the jacksonville jaguars so this week what you can expect is we're going to be starting position breakdowns for the Jacksonville Jaguars, but today what I wanted to do was discuss a little bit more about the Jaguars' new offensive coordinator, Jay Gruden, and what Jay Gruden brings to the table and why Jay Gruden might just be the fit that the Jaguars have been missing for such a long time. The Jaguars' offense has been hard to watch for really the last four or five years, and you know, if you really want to even go Further back, the last 10, 15 years, you know, since Brunel and Jimmy Smith, the whole Thunder and Lightning, obviously Maurice Jones drew back in the 2000s was the only bright spot of a really, really anemic Jaguar offense. But with Gardner Minshew at the helm and Jay Gruden as the offensive coordinator, this might be the missing link that this Jaguar offense has been missing. And this is why Jay Gruden could make this Jaguars offense explode, make this Jaguars offense the best that it's seen in the last decade. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why Jay Gruden might have been the missing link for the Jaguars offense in 2020. So first of all, with Jay Gruden, let's address the obvious elephant in the room, and that was his last season with the Washington Redskins as the head coach. It seemed like the team really kind of gave up on him as far as around week five, week six went, and a lot of things did not go his way in Washington. And, you know, if... <laughs> If you wanted to go to another place where a lot of things aren't going to go his way, you know, the Jacksonville Jaguars is the perfect location for him, but hopefully a lot of things do go Jay Gruden's way. I mean, Alex Smith had that awful leg injury. Dwayne Haskins kind of got to uh, thrown into the fire a lot quicker than he should have. He did have some bright spots on that offense, obviously. Torrey McLaurin, uh, he's a really exciting young wide receiver, and I think he's going to be um, really fun to watch for the next coming years, and I think he's going to be one of the game's best receivers uh, once he grows up a little bit in the next four or five years. A lot of people are going to know his name. So let's get his head coaching uh, gig out of the way. Let's talk about how he was as an offensive coordinator, talking about how he developed guys like Andy Dalton into playoff caliber quarterbacks. You look at a guy like Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew is the perfect person for a guy like Jay Gruden to build. And a lot of people are saying that, and a lot of people are right about that. Because Gardner Minshew needs an offensive coordinator that is going to play to his strength. John Day Filippo, when he came into Jacksonville last year, his whole purpose was to call plays that were going to benefit Nick Foles because Nick Foles was going to be the guy for Jacksonville. They gave him an $88 million contract. Obviously, when you look at Patrick Mahomes' contract, that's not that much money in retrospect, but an $88 million contract, and he was calling plays for Nick Foles, and Nick Foles was the guy that he was calling plays for. Jay Gruden now knows... And the Jags have made it clear that Gardner Minshew is their guy. Gardner Minshew is the quarterback moving forward to next season. And Jay Gruden has this whole offseason and maybe an extra offseason to really put together a game plan that is going to benefit Minshew. And they have a lot of time to work together, whether that be in person, hopefully they maintain their six-foot distance, or via Zoom call. And they can really work together and find out what works. Something else that I really like about Jay Gruden, he doesn't run necessarily like a spread offense, but the things that he does run in an NFL style of offense 
Kind of reminds me of a Mike Leach style offense if Mike Leach's stuff translated to the NFL. Mike Leach would never work in the NFL because of how ridiculous his scheme is and he does not run the ball at all. Obviously, you know, in the NFL you need to have a run game and the Jaguars have a run game with Leonard Fournette. And dare I say it, in the years that uh in the years that Jay Gruden has been coaching, offensive coordinator, head coach, wherever, Leonard Fournette is probably the best running back that he has had as an offensive coordinator or as a head coach. And, you know, he's gonna have a lot of good he's gonna have a lot of fun with Leonard Fournette and calling plays with Fournette. So there's gonna be a lot of run plays, but he's gonna have a lot to do with Gardner Minshew's development. And Minshew is already coming out of a system in college where a guy like Mike Leach was calling plays and, you know, Leach had a whole offseason. He went out, targeted uh, Gardner Minshew and said, hey, you know, this is going to be, you're going to be my guy. These are the plays that I'm calling for you. And this is what we're going to do. Jay Gruden knew when he came into Jacksonville, I'm sure they told him ahead because, you know, us as fans were kind of, you know, we don't know. We don't know anything, but I'm sure, you know, Doug Marone, Dave Caldwell, Shad Khan, they told Dave Caldwell, I mean, they told uh, Jay Gruden when he got the job, look, Gardner Minshew's going to be the guy. Gardner Minshew's going to be our quarterback, and you have this offseason, maybe another offseason, to really figure out what kind of plays you're going to be calling for him, and you're going to have to work with him because this is what we're going to do. And the Jags did a really good job at bringing in some weapons for Minshew, that could be very, very exciting. And guys that I think Jay Gruden is going to really enjoy working with, guys like LaVishka Chenault. I don't know if you guys seen it, but on his Instagram, he posted a video of him working out, and he looks really, really solid. LaVishka Chenault is a guy I'm very excited about, and I'm very excited to talk about when uh, the offensive uh, position outlooks come around. And we start talking about the wide receivers, and we dive into the wide receivers, and we talk about all of them individually. Because the wide receivers right now, I think this is the deepest wide receiver group that the Jaguars have had in a really long time with the uh, additions of LaVishka Chanel, Colin Johnson, and the guys that are already on the roster, guys like DJ Chark, who has the potential to blow up and be a really big difference maker. Guys that are just reliable, um, you know, three, two, three, four, you know, receiver options like D.D. Westbrook. Keelan Cole, you know, those guys that have always been, you know, kind of those reliable slot options. And, you know, that gives Keelan Cole more opportunities to return kicks as well. He's going to be effective in the special teams game. And right now I'm just going on a tangent about the wide receivers. But Jay Gruden, as crazy as this sounds, you know, no A.J. Green or anything, but D.J. Chark, he's young. This might be, you know, as far as a core of talent, this might be the best talent, young talent, that Jay Gruden's ever been around, and he is going to develop Gardner Minshew, he's going to develop this team, and this is going to be a very exciting year, and a lot of it comes down to Jay Gruden, and I hope if it's a year where the Jags go, you know, 6-10, and 5-11, a year where the Jags go, you know, and do what the Jags usually do, that the Jags don't promote Jay Gruden, you know, right up to the top to the head coach, because I don't think he's a head coach kind of guy, I think he's an offensive coordinator, and, you know, I think he just can run the offense and I think he can run the offense very well because the Jags have not had a successful offensive coordinator in a really long time I mean run down the list Jed Fish I mean fucking, you know you can't even John Day Phil Lupo uh Jed Fish wasn't the one from the see like I mean they're so forgettable names I mean just off the top of the dome I'm trying to think of who's the offensive coordinator that was there oh Nathaniel Hackett Nathaniel Hackett was there. We thought he was the real deal because him and Bortles, you know, they ran those trick plays all the time. And, you know, the Jags, the Jags haven't had an offensive coordinator that was worth a shit in a really long time. And, you know, when they went out and got a guy like Jay Gruden who kind of, you know, has a little bit of respect and has kind of that ability to develop those quarterbacks and he has an opportunity to do that with Gardner Minshew, especially when Minshew has worked with a with a guy like uh, Mike Leach, who I think has a lot of tendencies that Jay Gruden shows. I think this is a year where the Jaguars offense has the potential to be better than the defense. And it, that has been, that has not happened in a really long time in Jaguar history. Even when the Jags are bad, the defense is usually always better than the offense. So this is a year where the Jags should be putting up points. And I'm praying to God every single day 
that there's a football season because if there's not, I might go crazy and because I think this Jaguar team can put it together on the offensive side of the ball. And that was why the Jaguars offense is going to be really good in 2020. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop a new video on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Then it's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, you guys have a great rest of your day.